Hi, this is attorney Jamie Miller, Miller Law Chronicles podcast. Today, we're going to spend some time talking about bankruptcy and medical bills. There's a term that many people refer to or think about, and they call it medical bankruptcy. I kind of want to dispose of that myth that there is a separate bankruptcy called medical bankruptcy. Bankruptcy is bankruptcy and getting rid of debt. Medical bills and bankruptcy is something that we're really able to do. So we're gonna talk about that in a few minutes, but I'd really like you, if you have a moment, please subscribe or like the Miller Law Chronicle podcast. The more people that we have subscribe and like us, whether it's on Google Podcasts, whether it's on Spotify, whether it's on Apple, it's going to allow us to continue to offer this very valuable content. So please click below where you see that subscribe or like and like us. And we appreciate that very much. I know you're going to enjoy this podcast and we appreciate you listening in. Today, we're going to talk about medical debt discharging medical debt in bankruptcy and also dispelling the belief that there is some sort of special type of bankruptcy called medical bankruptcy. But we are hearing um, here at our offices here in Milwaukee and throughout the state of Wisconsin, many of our clients are talking about the mounting medical debt that they're dealing with. And as I did some research on it, I noticed that the mounting debt that clients are having here in Wisconsin is really similar to what's going on throughout the country. Approximately 79 million Americans are struggling with medical debt and about 62% of all bankruptcies contain some level of significant medical debt. It's a very striking number and outside of the bankruptcy world. It notes that 43 million Americans have unpaid medical bills. So these statistics highlight the impact that medical bills are having on individuals and families as bankruptcy rates continue to go up and healthcare access becomes a problem. So if you have medical bills, mounting medical bills, how should you, how should you deal with those? Well. There are many non-bankruptcy opportunities that you have on how to deal with this. And so the first thing to do is contact the healthcare provider, see if they have any grants or scholarship programs or anything that can help you take care of those medical bills. See if they can set you up on some sort of payment plan to help you pay off that medical debt. It's really important to stay in communication with the healthcare provider that you owe money to. If you owe a hospital or a large healthcare provider, many of those people will have specific departments of people that can help you figure out what resources they may have that will assist you with the medical bills. And oftentimes we see clients that have gone through that. They've set up payment plans. They look for different grants and financing options, and they really aren't able to, to find anything. One of the things we will look at is doing debt negotiation, but negotiating debts on medical bills is really hard as compared to negotiating debts with credit card companies or payday loans. We have a lot of success negotiating with those types of unsecured debts. But for some reason, contacting a hospital, contacting a doctor's office, contacting a healthcare provider, or even contacting a collection agency that may be collecting on that bill, it's just really hard to negotiate medical bills. They may set up a payment plan for you 50 a month or hundred a month that you can pay back over an extended period of time. If they're letting you pay it back monthly and you can afford that with no interest, that can be a great opportunity for you. But often what we see is that these healthcare providers are setting up payment plans that people can't afford. And so if you have these medical bills and you're not paying them, 
you could run the risk of getting sued where they'll file a collection lawsuit against you and whether where they could garnish your wages or place a lien on your property. Um, but I just want you to know that there's plenty of different options other than bankruptcy. If you've gone through those options, which you likely have, and you can't resolve the debt in a way that works for you and your family, you can consider bankruptcy as a way to get rid of your debt. Now, we often hear about the term medical bankruptcy. Medical bankruptcy is a term of art. It doesn't really mean anything. So there's no special type of bankruptcy that's going to have less impact on your credit or could be less challenging to go through because it is a medical bankruptcy. No such thing. So medical bill is what's referred to as a general unsecured debt. It is uh, like any other debt, like a credit card bill or a payday loan or a utility bills. Medical bills are dischargeable in bankruptcy. So if you have significant medical debt and you can't afford to pay back that debt, can't set up a payment plan that works for you, can't find any other resources to take care of that debt, bankruptcy can be a, a good option. So if you qualify for a chapter seven bankruptcy, which is a discharge of your debts, where we wipe out your debt, we will be able to file a chapter seven and get rid of that debt. You won't have to worry about it. If for some reason you don't qualify for a chapter seven bankruptcy because your income is too high or you have too many assets, you could qualify for a chapter 13 repayment plan where you can pay a percentage of your debt back or all of your debt back over a period of time of up to five years in a chapter 13. So even with no interest or no penalty. So chapter seven and chapter 13 could work for you. In Wisconsin, we're also like lucky to have something called a chapter 128. A chapter 128 is not a bankruptcy. It refers to Wisconsin statutes 128 that says that you can pick and choose any debts that you want to pay back and pay them back in full over three years or 36 months. So for instance, let's say you have $7,200 in medical bills. That means that you could do a chapter 128 on that $7,200. You'd have 36 months to pay it off. And if my math is right, you'd end up with a monthly payment $200 a month. So whether you do a chapter seven, a chapter 13, a chapter 128, it's going to stop collection efforts. It's going to stop garnishments and it's going to prevent your creditors from, from bothering you. And it's also, I don't want to go into it too much, um, but it's a great way to get rid of the debt, keep the creditors from bothering you, stop any garnishments but also it can be a good way to get back your credit and restore that credit score to a 720. So present data suggests that medical debt can be discharged through bankruptcy and that many people are doing it. So I hope this gave you some good insight into what to do with discharging medical bills and what your alternatives are. So I always suggest don't ignore your healthcare provider, reach out to them. They will know what resources that they have to help you. They will present you with those resources. You can investigate it. If you've investigated all those resources and you want to talk about bankruptcy options to discharge that debt, we can do a chapter seven. You can look at a chapter 13 to pay back a small percentage or all of the debt. Or Wisconsin statute chapter 128 can also help without even having to file for bankruptcy. Appreciate you listening. Take care and have a great day.